بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue <coughs> from where we left on uh, left off from last week which is where you can see the red highlighted text so basically the sheikh was explaining the eighth nullifier of Islam and it was to do with whoever aids um, the disbelievers with the aim of aiding them in their religion aiding them in their religion and having love for their religion and aiding them in that way over the religion of Islam and the Sheikh explains he started explaining the difference between um, the word called uh, the word At-Tawalli which is referring to that what I've just said and the word Al-Mu'alat and <clears throat> understanding these two different words and the uh, and the verses of the Quran that are related to it uh, is imperative because sadly today um, a lot of people misunderstand this and they end up excommunicating other Muslims because of their lack of understanding and uh, fiqh in, in, in understanding these words and what they actually mean um, in regards to uh, the tafsir of the Quran and what the scholars have mentioned of it. Sorry about that. I had some issues with the internet. <clears throat> right, okay. So the Sheikh was saying, um, he was explaining the word at tawalli and also was explaining the word Al-Mu'alat and the importance of understanding the difference between the two. So inshallah, we'll continue from where we left off last week. The Sheikh, he says, at tawalli huwa al-muhabbatu tamatu wa nusratu al-kafirin li dinihim liyantasira dinahum uh, ala deen al-islam wa mahabbat untisari deen al-islam wa mail al-qalb ilayhim nusratan wa awnan wa ta'eedan wa mahabbatan fahada yusamma tawalli wa huwa kufrun naqil min millat al-islam so then the shaykh he says that at tawalli what does this mean in reference to the uh, the verse from the Quran that we read which you can see also over here where the shaykh quotes it again وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّاهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ So the Shaykh, he says, that at tawalli it is complete love and helping the disbelievers in their religion and their way are over the deen of Al-Islam. And it's loving, helping them, complete, complete love in helping them with this, in this regard. And it's, the, uh, the the person's heart, you know, going towards them and going towards uh, helping and aiding and assisting them and loving them in doing that for the uh, for the victory of their deen and their way of life over the deen of Al Islam, the religion of Al Islam. This is what it means. And the Sheikh says, whoever falls into this category then uh, he ends up leaving the fold of Islam, it's major kufr, and he ends up becoming a disbeliever by way of it. The Shaykh, continues, he says, وَأَمَّا الْمُوَالَاتُ فَهِيَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ الْمُوَالَاتُ هِيَا مَحَبَّةُ الْكَافِرِ لِدُنْيَا لَا لِدِينِهِ أَنْ يُحِبَّهُ لِدُنْيَا لَا يُحِبَّهُ لِدِينِهِ وَأَيْضًا 
لدنيا يريدها من الكافر مثل أن يكون له تجارة في بلادهم أو يكون أو يكون له أهل في بلادهم فيريد أن يكون له يد عندهم فهو لا يحبهم ولا يحب دينهم ولا يحب انتصار دينهم وليس كارها للدين الإسلامي ولا محبا لانهزام المسلمين كل هذه المعاني ما قامت فيه لكنه عاونهم في شيء ما شيء ما من أجل دنيا له مثل تجارة مثل تجارة أو أهل أو نحو ذلك فهذا لا يكون ناقدا من نواقد الإسلام وهو إثم ومحرم وعمر نظيم لكنه لا ينتقد به إسلامه انتقاد الدين يكون بالتولي كما في الآية الكريمة ومن يتولاهم من ومن يتولاهم منكم فإنه منهم أي مثلهم كافر So then the Sheikh goes on to say well what's the difference then Tawalli and he, say, he explains what Al-Mu'alat means he says here it is other than what At-Tawalli is which is uh, what he mentioned uh, in the previous uh, line and he says Al-Mu'alat is loving uh, the disbeliever in, for, for the sake of the dunya for something of the dunya to gain something in the dunya and not loving the person for his deen or loving this disbeliever for his deen and that he loves this person for the, for the sake of the dunya for something from the dunya and he doesn't love him for, for the sake of his deen of the disbeliever's religion and also this is and also helping this disbeliever for the dunya and not the deen so for the dunya so this is to do with the dunya for example the sheikh says like helping a disbeliever or aiding the disbeliever in fighting the muslims for uh, as an example or showing the person a thing from um the plans or strategies of the muslims not for the sake of the disbeliever's deen but is doing it for the sake of the dunya for the dunya to get something that he wants from the dunya from this disbeliever the sheikh says like for example it may be some kind of trading it may be um uh, some land or, or or to get there to a land or whatever it might be or it may be because of family or people in that land so he does these actions for the because of the dunya for the dunya to reach this thing from the dunya and he doesn't the and this person he doesn't love them uh for the sake of their religion and aiding their deen and their religion and etc this is what the sheikh says so this person is not hating the deen of al islam and he doesn't love uh, uh, the loss of the muslims or you know that the muslims lose he, do, he doesn't believe any of this or any of these meanings uh, that which the sheikh explained in the meaning of at tawalli so however this person he helps the disbeliever for the reason of gaining something from the dunya uh whether that be you know business trading money maybe people are involved etc these kinds of examples and the sheikh says so this in this situation this does not it doesn't qualify as being a nullifier and is not from the nullifiers of islam however this is um a, a grave sin it's sinful it's forbidden and it's a great 
magnificent affair to be in, as in from a negative point of view. However, the person, the person's Islam stays intact. He is not, he does not leave the fold of Al-Islam. Uh, which is uh, what the Sheikh has explained here, Al-Muwalat. However, if there's Tawalli, which he explained earlier, then obviously if it's Tawalli uh, and falls under that definition, then of course, then the person leaves the fold of Al-Islam. And the Sheikh brings the ayah that we, we read earlier as well as an uh, as the example, I mentioned it last week as well. Then the Sheikh continues and he says, أَمَّا الْمُوَالَاتُ فَهِيَ دُونَ ذَلِكَ وَمِثْلُ مَا حَصْلَ مِنْ حَاتِبِ بْنُ عَبِي بَلْتَعَ رضي الله عنه آه لما كتب للمشركين كتابا وبعثه مع امرأة إلى كفار كفار قريش يخبرهم بأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يخطط لفتح مكة فعلم النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أطلعه الله عز وجل وجل على وجل على ذلك وبعث بعض الصحابة وأدركوها في الطريق ووجدوا الخطاب معها فأتى بحاتب وأقر بذلك وقال رضي الله عنه والله ما فعلت ذلك تركا للإيمان أو تخليا عن الإيمان أو كفرا بالله سبحانه وتعالى ولكن لي أهل ومال فأردت أن يكون لي يد عندهم فلم يكن بذلك كافرا منتقلا من ملة الإسلام لأن هذا ليس تولي للكفار لم, يتو... لم يتولي الكفار لم يقم في قلبه حب... حب تام لهم ولم يقم في قلبه رغبة في انتصار الكفر والكافرين وانهزام المسلمين لم يقم ذلك في قلبه وأخبر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام بذلك والنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أقره So uh, this is uh, relevant in terms of what happened in our history and the Sheikh brings this forth he says as for Al-Muwalat then this is other than Tawalli as the Sheikh explained and he goes on to say like what happened uh, with um, uh, one of the uh, Sahaba Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a radiallahu anhu may Allah be pleased with him when he wrote uh, to the Mushrikeen a letter uh, and uh, he, he found a woman and he sent a woman to go and, and deliver this letter to the kuffar of the Quraysh to inform them that the Prophet Sallallahu was planning the conquest of Mecca. And the Prophet Sallallahu learned about this affair. Allah revealed this to him and informed Allah informed him of this affair, of what happened. And so a group of the Sahaba I went to, uh, became a web, so I went to find this woman. They found the woman with the letter, uh, this letter that she was on the way to Mecca to let the Quraysh know. Then, uh, and then they, they brought this uh, uh, letter to uh, the Sahabi, and he said, Yeah, I did that. Uh, um, Hatib ibn Abi Balta said, I, I, did, I, I did that. And he, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, Wallahi, by Allah, I didn't do that uh, uh, for the sake of leaving my iman or, or the religion or to get rid, to remove myself of iman uh, or in disbelief or disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I have family and uh, wealth uh, there in Mecca and I wanted that, that I have an advantage with regards to that for my family and that wealth that he had there. So the Sheikh says, so because of this, uh, uh, and by this then, um, uh, with regard to that, he wasn't he, he wasn't a kafir because this comes under al-muwalat. He, he didn't disbelieve, uh, which doesn't remove him from the, uh, the fold of al-Islam. Because the Sheikh says, because this is not the wali of the kuffar, Rather, it's al-mu'alat, which is different, as the Sheikh explained earlier when we translated what the Sheikh said. Uh, and he didn't obviously aid and assist, which comes under at tawalli of the disbelievers. You know, it, it, it wasn't established within his heart as, as, as from his speech. It's not established in his heart that he had a complete love for them. Nor was it established within his heart that he had a, a, a fervent desire in there, aiding them, um, uh, aiding the disbelievers. Uh, in uh, uh, in order for the Muslims to lose, there's none of that there. 
none of that came uh, in his heart and none of that was established uh, and, uh, in his heart. And the Prophet Sallallahu uh, was informed with regard to that and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well attested to that as well. So this is a clear evidence for us to understand this affair and this is a direct uh, look this evidence this is from the hadith and this is from the sahaba and the prophet so it's very important to understand this affair and the difference between the tawalli and al muwalat so then the shaykh says fa tawalli huwa al muhabbatu at tamal lil kuffar wa iradatu al intisar din al kafirin ala din al muslimin wa muawanatu al kafirin li yantasira dinahum ala din al islam wal farh wa surur bi intisar al kuffar wa hizam al muslimin هذا تولي للكافرين وهو كفر ناقل من ملة الإسلام لا يقوم من مسلم ومن ومن وقع منه ذلك فهو كافر كفر أكبر ناقل من ملة الإسلام وأما الموالاة فهي محبة الكافر للدنيا ومعاونته للدنيا ليكون له يد عند الكافر أو نحو ذلك فهذا ليس من الأمور التي ينتقد بها الإسلام وهو من العظائم وهو ذنب عظيم وجرم وجرم وإثم عقوبته عند الله عظيمة لكن فاعل فاعل ذلك لا يكون به مرتد كافر منتقد دينه دينه وإيمانه. سيدنا الشيخ says so going back التولي what is a tawalli a tawalli is uh, having a complete love for the disbelievers wanting to aid them and help them uh, in their religion, aiding their religion over the re religion of the Muslims uh, and aiding them and, uh, you know, aiding them, helping them uh, in their religion over the deen of Islam, over the religion of Islam and being happy and being pleased uh, with, uh, with all of this and in making the Muslims lose. That's the kind of characteristic. This is a tawalli and the Sheikh says that this uh, anybody under this description uh, leaves the fold of Al Islam, as he mentioned earlier. Then he says, as for Al Muwalat, he says Al Muwal Al Muwalat, then it is loving the uh, disbeliever for the sake of the dunya and helping the disbeliever for the sake of the dunya for a reason in which encompasses dunya. So where the, and the previous story was mentioned, mal or there's family involved or there's wealth involved, etc. And that there be an advantage for that person in that. This is why they do it. And this is al-mu'alat. The shaykh says, and this is not from the affairs that nullify the person's Islam. However, it is a grave and uh, it's a grave affair, a grave matter. And it is, a, 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 you know, a, a great sin and a great crime. Um, uh, and the uh, punishment of falling into this is with Allah. And it's a it's a big crime, as the Sheikh mentioned. It's a it's a big crime. It's a, a big thing. Uh, whoever does that. But however, the important thing here, the important point, is that the person does not leave the fold of Al Islam because of doing that. Yeah. So this is the the the, the difference between al tawalli and uh, al muwalat. And it's very important to understand it. So the Shaykh, he continues, he says, Wal Musannif, rahimahullah ta'ala, istadalla li dhalika bi qawli Allahi azza wa jal, ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu, la tattakhidhu al-yahuda wal-nasara, awliya'a ba'duhum, awliya'u ba'd, wa man yatawallahum minkum fa innahu minhum, inna Allah la yahdil qawm al-zalimin. And the Shaykh mentioned this ayah in, the, uh, in last week's lesson. This is from... Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 51 So whoever needs to remind themselves of the meaning Can refer to the English translation Or whichever translation that they are referring to They can read that themselves inshallah As it's already been discussed The Shaykh says huna al -kufr. The Shaykh says that the Zulm that's been mentioned in this ayah This oppression that's been mentioned in this ayah It's the oppression Means here it means Disbelief the Sheikh says, "Lianna arafna fima fima sabaka anna wa anna zulma lahu itlaqat fataratan yutlaqu wa yuradu bihi al kufru al akbaru al naqilu min millat al Islam." Ka qawlihi Subhanahu, "Inna shirka la zulmun azim." Wa qawluhu, "Wal kafirun hum al zalimun." Wa qawluhu, "Fadunku fama li zalimin min nasir." Ay al kafirin. وتارة 
يطلق ويراد به ظلم النفس بالمعاصي وذنوب التي هي دون الكفر بالله كقوله سبحانه وتعالى ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذي نصطفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتسد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو الفضل الكبير جنات عدن يدخلونها So the Sheikh brings the first, uh, all of the ayahs that we read, except the last one, where zulm has been mentioned, is in relation to kufr, disbelief. But in the last ayah that we read, the longer one just that we just read now, then that explains, as the Sheikh will mention as well here, that that shows us that zulm has, um, has meanings. It, it has different meanings. Sometimes, depending on the context, it means disbelief. Uh, in other uh, areas of the Quran For example in the context As in this last ayah It comes with a different meaning Like sin, being sinful Or oppressing yourself in terms of being sinful For example the Shaykh he mentions here After this ayah that, is, uh, that, that we read He says That um, The zalim here The zalim li nafsihi Then this is the person Who has committed sin But let's go to the um, the translation of the meaning first, inshallah, and then we'll translate the rest. So, this ayah is in Surah Fatir, verse 32. Then we gave the book, the Quran, for inheritance to such of our slaves whom we chose, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then of them are some who wrong their own selves, and of them are some who follow a middle course, and of them are some who are by Allah's leave foremost in good deeds. That inheritance of the Quran, that is indeed a great grace. Adan, Eden, paradise, everlasting gardens will they enter. Therein will they be adorned with bracelets of gold and pearls and their garments there will be of silk, i.e. in paradise. <coughs> so, the Sheikh, he says, the wow in the, this wow here, in this ayah, if you can see the cursor, where it says يَدْخُلُونَهَا It says And the wow في قوله يَدْخُلُونَ تَشْمَلُوا الظَّالِمْ لِنَفْسِي وَالْمُقْتَصِدْ وَالسَّابِقْ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ فَكُلُّهُمْ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ لَكِنَ الْمُقْتَصِدْ وَالسَّابِقْ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِدُونِ حِسَابِ وَلَا عَذَابٍ وَأَمَّا الظَّالِمُ so then the Sheikh says that this this entering of paradise for these three groups of people, as we read in the meaning of the this ayah, the three people, um, it, this wow, this wa, it con, it covers all of them. It, it's all of them, and this ha goes back to this ha yadkhuluna ha is referred to all of these three groups. Which then shows us, if we ponder over that, as the Sheikh is explaining, that that the zulm that's being mentioned here is not a kufr. It's not it's not a kufr that takes you out of all of Islam. It's actually the person who here in this meaning of the verse or this word in this verse, the meaning of it is a person who oppress themselves in terms of committing sins, committing sins, minor and major sins, for example. And the and the Sheikh says here, as he goes on to say, he says that this is what. It encompasses even this person and then the person who's economic, who follows the middle way, uh, who, uh, who does whatever Allah has uh, uh, told him to do, commanded him to do, and stays away from everything that Allah has told him to stay away from. Then this person's muqtasid, that's the middle one in the middle path. And then there's the one who's a sabiqun bil khairat, that's the person who goes, who is, does what the muqtasid does the middle, in the middle path, but does more. So does nawafil, does all kinds of uh, superrogatory optional extra deeds and these two uh, groups of people they will enter as the sheikh says they will enter uh, paradise without any account allah will not account them why because they've not they've oh, they've done whatever allah has told them to do and they stayed away from all the things that allah has told them to stay away from and they'll go straight to paradise without any accountability however the zalim uh, uh, nafs then this person he will enter paradise 
uh, if Allah chooses to punish him, he will be punished in the hellfire first for the reason of purification, and then he will be thrown into paradise. So uh, this is where the Sheikh is making the distinction between the meaning of zulm, or zalim, or zulm in the Quran uh, and within our religion to understand it that it comes with different meanings based on the context. <clears throat> and he says here in the last part of the sentence, he says that the Muslim, the person who dies upon Islam and Iman, then if the person ends up in the hellfire, it's only for purification and that is, he won't be in the hellfire uh, for eternity. However, the mushrik, the polytheists and the disbelievers, then they'll be in the hellfire forever. That's what the, that's the punishment that they will get. The Sheikh goes on to say, فَقَوْلُهُ فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ الْمُرَادِ بِالظُّلْمُ هُنَا هُوَ الْمَعَاصِي أَلَّتِي دُونَ الْكُفْرِ وَالشِّرْكِ بِاللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَلَى وَيَدُلُّ لِذَلِكَ سِيَاقِ الْآيَاتِ لِأَنَّهُ قَالَ ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْنَ الْكِتَابَ الَّذِي نَصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ إِبَادِنَا فَهُمْ مُصْطَفَوْنَ وَهُمْ مِنْ إِبَادِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ ذَكَرَهُمْ أَصْنَافًا ثَلَاثًا الظَّالِم ثم ختم ذلك بقوله جنات عدن يدخلونها اي هؤلاء ثلاثه ثم بعد ذلك انتقل السياق الى الى الكلام عن الكف... عن الكافر الذي ظلمه ظلم كفر فقال جل وعلا والذين كفروا لهم نار جهنم لا يقضى عليهم فيموت ولا يخفف عنهم من عذابها كذلك نجزي كل كفور وهم يسترخون فيها ربنا أخرجنا نعمل صالحا غير الذي كنا نعمل أولم نعمركم ما يتذكر فيه من من تذكر وجاءكم النذير وجاءكم النذير فذوقوا فما للظالمين من نصير فقولوا هنا فما للظالمين من نصير أي الكافرين so then the Sheikh mentioned what, 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 already, what, what is already mentioned uh, in the previous paragraph and then he brings a, an ayah which is a few ayahs down from uh, what we read from Surah Al-Fatir verse 32. This is verse, uh, verse 36 in regards to the disbelievers. And this is but those who disbelieve in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, for them will be the fire of hell. Neither it will have a complete killing effect on them so that they die nor shall its torment be lightened for them. Thus do requite every disbeliever. Therein they will cry, Our Lord, bring us out. We shall do righteous good deeds, not the evil deeds that we used to do. And Allah will reply, Did we not give you lives long enough so that whosoever would receive admonition could receive it? And the warner came to you, so taste you the evil of your deeds. For the Dali moon, polytheists and wrongdoers, etc., there is no helper. And so, as you can see here, the Sheikh has mentioned, as you can see, that the Dhali mean, the word Dhali moon and Dhali mean here in this ayah, 36, uh, 36 and 37, this is now referring to disbelief, the disbelievers. So see, there's a distinction uh, that we need to take note of uh, between the meaning of this word in regards to the context. As the Sheikh has explained quite thoroughly here, Alhamdulillah. He goes on to say, فَذَلْمُوا فِي الْقُرْآنِ تَارَةً يُطْلَقُ وَيُرَادُ بِهِ الْكُفَرَ الْأَكْبَرَ النَّاقِلِ مِنْ مِلَّةٍ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ وَتَارَةً يُطْلَقُ وَيُرَادُ بِهِ الظُّلْمُ الَّذِي هُوَ ظُلْمُ النَّفْسِ بِالْمَعَاصِ وَالْذُنُوبِ الَّتِي هِيَ دُونَ الْكُفْرِ وَالشِّرْكِ بِاللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى And in summary, the Sheikh, he says here then, after all of that explanation, he says, then in summary, ظلم, oppression in the Quran, sometimes it comes with the meaning of disbelief, major disbelief, major kufr, major disbelief, which leaves, which makes the person leave the fall of Islam. And sometimes it comes with the meaning uh, of oppressing oneself uh, by way of committing sins. Yeah, perpetrating sins. And here it is other than disbelief and shirk and polytheism with Allah Jalla wa Ala. So that's in summary uh, what the Sheikh has been saying here. And he summarized it there. So then he goes on to say, he says, A shahidu anna qawla Allah yazza wa jalla fi hadhi al-aya fi hadhi al-aya al-lati saqaha al-musannifu rahimahullahu ta'ala inna Allah la yahdi al-qawm al-zalimin ay al-kafirin wa shahidu aydan fi al-aya fi al-aya lil-maqsudi wa huwa 
ذكر ناقد من نواقد الإسلام قوله ومن يتولاهم أي الكفار ومن يتولاهم منكم أي من المسلمين فإنه منهم أي ليس من المسلمين وعرفنا معنى التولي والفرق بينه وبين الموالات So then the Sheikh summarizes what he said early in all of these lessons and the last week's lesson uh, he summarizes it here uh, with regards to the meaning of uh, dhulm as mentioned as well and also the meaning of at-tawalli and, and, uh, and al-mu'alat and whoever hasn't listened to last week's lesson and this week's lesson then uh, I urge you to go back and uh, listen to the lesson to understand uh, these important points because they're very very impo- important and especially in current times people are uh, not understanding these terms and they're applying them incorrectly and as a result they're excommunicating Muslims from the deen of al-Islam and by doing that they end up doing that to themselves as well um, uh, by this grave mistake that a lot of people are making in uh, lack of understanding uh, uh, and knowledge in, in, in understanding these uh, important terms uh, so uh, I urge you to do that inshallah if you haven't listened to the this uh, today's lesson and uh, last week's lesson so then the Shaykh continues, we're going to move on to the next page, inshallah, and then we'll finish so in about five minutes. The Shaykh, uh, he continues and he says, يَقُولُ الْإِمَامُ مُحَمَدِ بْنُ عَبْدُ الْوَحَابِ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَغَفَرَ لَهُ التَّاسِعُ مَنِ اعْتَقَدَ أَنَّا مَنِ اعْتَقَدَ أَنَّا بَعْدَ النَّاسِ يَسْعُهُ الْخُرُوجُ عَنْ شَرِيْعَةِ مُحَمَدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم كما حاضر الخروج عن شريعة موسى عليه السلام فهو كافر. So we're moving on to the ninth nullifier, the ninth nullifier of Islam, and the Sheikh mentions here, as the author uh, mentions in the bold writing, that whoever believes that some people have the capability or the ability to uh, go outside the laws that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came with like the example of for example um, where Khadir uh, op- uh, operate outside the uh, Sharia of uh, Musa alayhi salam then whoever is like this then or on this path then he is a disbeliever has left the fold of al-Islam. The Shaykh, he goes on to explain, he says, قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى التاسع أي من نواقض الإسلام من اعتقد أن بعد الناس يسعه الخروج عن شريعة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كما واسي الخدر الخروج عن شريعة موسى عليه الصلاة السلام فهو كافر. قوله رحمه الله من اعتقد أن بعد الناس يسعه الخروج عن شريعة محمد إلى آخر فهو كافر هذا بيان لناقد من نواقد الإسلام ودليل ودليل هذا الناقد وشواهد كثيرة لأن شرايا الإسلام التي بعث الله بها نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم هي دين الله هي دين الله الذي رضيه لإباده ولا يرضى لهم دينا سوى ومن اختار لنفسه دينا أو طريقة أو عملا غير شرائع الإسلام التي جاء بها النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام فلا فلا يقبل الله منه عمله قال الله عز وجل إن الدين عند الله الإسلام وقال جل وعلا ومن ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين وقال جل وعلا اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا فالإسلام هو دين الله إن الدين عند الله الإسلام وهو الدين, وهو الدين الذي رضيه لإباده ولا يرضى لهم دينا سوى ورديت لكم الأسلام دينا وهو الدين الذي لا يقبل الله عز وجل دينا سواه كما قال ومن يبتغي غير ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين. So inshallah we'll uh, I'll finish explaining that and then we'll stop. So then the sheikh he says that 
that this what what the original authors mentioned here in the uh, for the ninth nullifier of Islam, then this is a clarification that this is one of the nullifiers from the nullifiers of the deen, the religion of Islam, and the and the evidence uh, for this nullifier and its points um, are many. And the Sheikh says because the the legislation of Al Islam that Allah sent the sent our Prophet with sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is the religion of Allah, and Allah is pleased with this religion for His slaves, His servants, and He does not, and He's not, and He's not pleased with any other religion other than it. And whoever chooses a religion or a way of life or a way other than the legislation of Al-Islam and the religion of Al-Islam which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with, was sent with then Allah will not accept any of his actions will not accept anything from him and then the Shaykh came with a few ayahs that we read where Allah Jalla wa Ala said in verily the, reli the religion with Allah is Al-Islam and he also said and whoever wishes uh, other than uh, was wishes other than Al-Islam as a religion or wants other than Islam as a religion then Allah uh, then he will not be accepted from him and he will and in the in the day of judgment in the Akhirah he will be a loser he will be from amongst the losers and also Allah said that today I have completed your religion for you as we know in this ayah and completed my favor upon you and I am pleased uh, uh, for you uh, uh, or I am pleased with the religion of Islam for you as a religion a complete way of life and um, and the sheikh mentions here and he re uh, refers us back to uh, the verse uh, in the deen in the Allah al-Islam that in uh, verily the religion with Allah is al-Islam and he says that this is the deen that Allah is pleased with for his servants and his slaves and Allah is not pleased with any other religion other than it and as mentioned in the last ayah that we read that uh, towards the end of it that Allah is pleased with the religion of Islam for us for his slaves for his creation and the Sheikh says this is the deen which Allah accepts Allah Azawajal accepts as a religion and, uh, and, and nothing else is accepted as mentioned and the Sheikh mentions the ayah again that we read earlier that whoever wishes to follow another religion uh, there's uh, the summary of the meaning of this ayah that whoever f um, wishes or wants to follow another religion other than Islam then it will not be accepted from him and he will be in the uh, in the afterlife or in the akhirah from amongst the losers so inshallah we'll stop there and we'll continue this lesson next week barakallahu feekum Subhanakullah wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh